Hey everybody, welcome to Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. Check out our YouTube channel for game guides, reviews, comedy, music videos, and tons more. And wild speculation. And wild spec. I always get so worked up saying that line, and then it's like, what the crap am I supposed to say next? I uh, just, you know, it just kind of cuts off dead. My name is Ash Ninity, and I'm here with the very talented, the incredibly handsome, the mind-blowingly intelligent. Oh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. We f we fired that guy. Uh, you just had me Cypsidian again. Sorry. Fucking damn it. Who is running this outfit? Damn it. Well, I don't know, but you couldn't get us fired if you keep complaining. Uh, anyway. We should unionize like the Smash players. Oh, the Smash players are unionizing. <laughs> I read about that. Are they're, yeah, they're talking about unionizing. They're talking about unionizing. Because these guys, you know, they're traveling all around the world. Uh, they do these, travel a lot, yes. These esports guys, they travel around the world. They don't get a lot of breaks. They, they do have a lot of burnout. Like, they do this professionally. They mm -hmm. do it. This is their job. This is their job. And I was reading comments on the article where someone suggested, you know, maybe they need a union or something to, uh, you know, to prevent this kind of burnout that they only are allowed to have X number of matches a year or something like that. Anyway, a lot of the comments were like, oh, it's really hard to feel bad for people who play video games for a living. <laughs> like, wah, wah, wah. <laughs> the thing is, if you compare it to professional sports players, I, I find that that, that complaint kind of goes away for me. It's not necessarily the plane. It's not that. It's the travel. Um, and people need to kind of realize that it's it's the travel and the number of events and the, the grueling schedule that they have to like keep to on top of like in order to be good at anything you have to train a lot yeah like you have to keep you have to keep your skills up constantly yeah exactly like professional sports players they have I don't know if you'd call them unions but they have like there are league rules there are yeah, there's tons things of rules in place. behind it and these guys are making millions of dollars a year like players in the NHL players in the you know professional Football, soccer. Um, well, actually, I don't know how much soccer players make, or what you Europeans would call football. Mm, I don't know. Let us know. Yeah, I don't know about you, but I doubt that these uh, these esports players are being paid that much for, for what they do. I don't actually know off the top of my head, but it's like it's like anything. Like you're making a living playing a game, whether it's a video game or sports or or you know chess or anything like that. The fact that you enjoy it doesn't mean that it's it's not work and that it's not tough. So I finished up Prey this week, and uh, I'm going to be releasing a, a video very soon, uh, in the next few days, uh, just to, giving my impressions of the ending and what I thought of that. But uh, my biggest disappointment is something I found out that, that was not included in the game. <laughs> something that was cut. Um, the, there was apparently supposed to be a weapon called the Disc Rifle that was... Like, it would talk to you, it would give you vocal feedback, and it was semi-sentient. And as you went through the game, it would become more and more self-aware, <laughs> more and more sentient. And uh, eventually start Brilliant. questioning the reasons for its own existence and uh, having these moral quandaries until, you know, it, it apparently re would reach a point where it would refuse to fire because it, <laughs> it became morally opposed to... The purpose for which it was created yeah that is hilarious <laughs> i love that concept that reminds me of the um in neverwinter nights uh one of the expansion packs for neverwinter nights the original uh one from um bioware when they used to make good games they had a uh they had a sword that was intelligent it had a soul of a dude trapped inside of it and he like but he he went the other way he really got into it like he he's like Whenever you kill a dwarf, he's like, ha ha, let's cut its beard off once it's dead. <laughs> and um, he would like really, he was really crazy. He was really kind of like out there. But the thing that was really cool about it, he did have that moment of, you know, I don't know what I'm, you know, what is, what does my existence become? And it starts, you know, pondering the questions of life. And maybe, maybe my body was res resurrected and I'm, I did, you know, live out a normal life. Just part of my soul got trapped in here or duplicated or it was really crazy. It was really good. Uh, huh. Really made you think. But a rifle talking to you, like seriously, that is the best concept ever. I can't believe I've never even thought of that before. I, 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 I can't believe they cut it. I can't believe they cut it from the game because that that would really fit in with uh, the the overall uh, atmosphere and theme of the game. Yeah, no it kidding. would have fit perfectly well. So I really think this this kind of a a thing needs to show up in one of the mobas or um, uh, arena shooters. I would love it to see a character in Overwatch that had the same kind of core concept. <laughs> where your gun just, or like, that, where the guy's gun, like, 
mocks you or, or whatever, mm-hmm. mocks other players or something like that. Or like chooses not to attack certain targets. Like, <laughs> I'm a pacifist. Like, you're a machine. I don't want to kill Mercy. <laughs> you're a... uh, I don't want to kill Mercy. Mercy's hot. What are, what are you talking about? I don't, I don't want to do that. Or like, <laughs> you're shooting at a at a team. Like, what, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm not going to shoot at that. Like, you know. Or maybe when it uh, sees the the hot female character on the other team, it fires all its bullets at once. Uh, you can't see it, but I just face palmed right now. <laughs> it was funnier in my head. Speaking of AI becoming alive and becoming sentient and questioning its own existence, you can watch right now live on Twitch. As of recording this, it's live. The the Twitch channel is called Sentdex, S-E-N-T-D-E-X. You can watch uh, a neural network, so a dedicated AI, learning to drive in um, GTA V. And uh, I'm just watching it right now, trying to maneuver and navigate. And uh, Just so you know... Just so you know, this is this is how Skynet starts. This is how the robots that kill everybody on the planet. This is how it starts, you people. <laughs> you're, you're you're putting it into a world of Grand Theft Auto where it's like, hey, there's no rules here. I can do whatever I want to with these puny humans. <laughs> I just watched the. <laughs> so it was like it had rammed itself up against a wall, and there's like. I gotta mute this because the audio is totally throwing me off. But um, there's like this feedback text that's scrolling in the in the uh, upper left hand corner, and it's like saying, "Oh yeah, we are moving th- at this speed for this long, and you know this is our motion, this is our direction, etc." It couldn't get away from this wall, and so the text came up like, "We're probably stuck." FFS, initiating evasive maneuvers. So um, no, I don't I don't know what it's doing now, but it is currently in the stats menu. So I don't know what the hell's going on. But anyway, you want to watch an AI learn to drive and uh, then look very forward to your first self-driving car. Uh, go ahead and check out uh, twitch.tv slash And uh, uh, it's interesting because because it is learning. It's learning based exclusively. The only information it has is the actual image on uh, on the screen, like the pixel data. So, so it's this, actually this playing the game we, the same way. This is how we get Skynet. This is how the world ends. Just so you guys all know. In an explosion of uh, cars. But anyway, how long ago did GTA Five come out? That was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was a lo- yeah, it was a long time. It's ago. Still, they've had so many updates to that game. Very positive, very good series. Um, they definitely did it right. And um, the only thing that I found is I didn't, I didn't really like any of the characters so i was never i never wanted to play the game for the you know for the actual game i just want to play it for the multiplayer that's that's all oh yeah and and i just want to throw this out there for for devs hey you know it it showcases your skill when you can bring multiple characters from many different backgrounds together and you get them to you know play out a a story that shows good writing skill I'm not impressed when each character reminds me of a character that I've seen in a in the same TV show. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Again, great multiplayer. They just knocked that out of the park. That there's an unlimited things you can do in that game as far as the multiplayer goes. It's, it's almost up there with Skyrim. But as far as like the story goes, hope you guys can add some more flavor to it next time. So, uh, Divinity Original Sin 2 got its release date and it's set for this September. I I just want to quickly throw props to this game. They have done a really good job of running this Kickstarter and this is how Kickstarter projects I feel should work. Um, they, they have done an enormously good job of handling this. I'm hearing nothing but positivity coming from the reviewers and the p- people who are in early access and yeah, it, it looks really good. I'm really stoked. I will probably pick this up in uh, September. Okay, right on. The other th- game that has recently grabbed my attention is Wilson's Heart. Um, I have not played this yet, as I don't have a I don't have easy access to a VR machine yet. But this game looks amazing. I watched the uh, trailer for it and some of the the like early reactionary stuff, and like, oh my goodness, this game is. <laughs> is looking really, really, really crazy, amazing, fascinating. This is definitely taking, you know, horror in the new direction. This looks creepy AF. Yeah, this, this, 
uh, I'm not sure if I want to play this because uh, I I may not sleep for a couple days afterwards. This the way that they handle the um, the jump scares and the way they handle the fear is really really good. I cannot wait to put a headset on a bunch of elderly people and get them to try and play this game. I think um, I think that'll make for some great content. You'll probably go to jail for murder. Probably, probably. I'm sure some people will die horribly, but you know, all in the name of science. So, <laughs> which is which is kind of what they do in the in the uh, in the game. Yeah, that's kind of huh. It's kind of creepy, but no, seriously, this this is a good direction. This is what uh, VR is going to have to rely on is some really out of the box thinking like this. So I'm really impressed. I'm really glad that this game is looking like it's getting a a huge step in the right direction. Um, if you have played this or if you are planning on playing it, um, drop your reactions down in the comments. I'd love to know a little bit more before I get a chance to get my hands on this myself. This is, wow. Nuts, right? Nuts. I don't even know what I'm looking at right now. This is crazy. Lots, I like this. Lots of, it's interesting that it's black and white, though. That's... Well, that just adds to the eeriness of it. Yeah, uh, I was never really um, when I when I watch horror movies, I'm always like kind of annoyed by them because they don't make sense most of the time. It's like, why split up? You guys are a bunch of idiots. What what do you think was going to happen? Like really? Like how? Like really? You're that stupid? Okay, whatever. You know. Um, and then sometimes it's like, especially with the Freddy series and the Jason series, it, it just doesn't. There's so much. There's so many like logical inconsistencies in it. I understand that it's partially supernatural or or whatever, but it's like, come on. Like, if if you're gonna have a horror movie where there are no rules whatsoever and you can just you can just skirt past whatever rule that you want to, then it's not a. It's. I don't think that's a horror movie. I think that's just a a straight up snuff film whatever which is nasty but speaking of nasty with lots of blood uh the new netflix series castlevania oh yeah has dropped its first teaser today we got the first trailer for that i gotta say i'm um very much looking forward to it i'm i'm cautiously optimistic i'm cautiously optimistic i i would have preferred them to do this in live action um but i i feel that it probably would have just come out probably more like uh if it if it was uh if it was live action my concern would be it it would come out like uh the hugh jackman van helsing movie yeah kind of that's maybe kind of corny that and and the dracula movie that came out recently i feel i feel you're right i think it would kind of you know probably just end up being kind of like that i mean it might have if it had been done right then uh then maybe if it had been given the, a really sort of gritty feel and if they had, you know, had a degree of realism to it. I mean, movies and shows based on video games, they it's very tenuous ground. So maybe going with an animated feel for it is, is maybe that is more appropriate. But I, I'm looking forward to it. The, t- the teaser looked really good to me. I thought it was clever when, they, you know, they have this... Uh, original NES and they, they put the Netflix cartridge in it <laughs> and like you see an 8-bit house of cards come up and yeah I don't know it's clever yeah that was that was pretty funny um yeah so interested to see how this goes hopefully it goes well because I'd like you know I'd like more solid transitions to film and television for what it's worth so anyways looking forward to that now on to E3 the stuff you need to know. Stuff you need to know. What uh, is happening on June 10th? June 10th. The EA press conference starts at 12 p.m. Pacific time. What are we looking forward to from EA this year? Well, with EA, we're expecting a lot of really bad rushed game content that doesn't make any sense <laughs> and uh, has been put out way too early and has completely ruined a bunch of franchise. Oh, sorry. They're trying to avoid that this year. Okay, whatever. A um, little, little late there. A little late there. EA. I don't know. Uh, get get your crap together, EA. Yeah. Uh, probably a big, probably a big push on the whole um, Star Wars stuff uh, with some of the Star Wars games coming out. We're gonna see probably the new Bioware stuff come out. So that's gonna be that's gonna be huge. We're hoping brand new Bioware IP, uh, which we discussed. Uh, it was two weeks ago. We discussed that in depth. Uh, yeah, Codename Dylan. 
The other thing that we are expecting to see from Bioware is going to be a probably like a trailer, possibly a uh, teaser, possibly a sneak peek, maybe um, you know maybe something a little bit more in depth on the new Dragon Age game. Hmm. So possibly expect that it's not due out for a little bit more, but we might get some news or info on it. So the next day, Sunday, Sunday, June got, 11th, we got the Microsoft press conference starts at 2 p.m. Pacific time. And what are we looking at for Microsoft? So Microsoft is going to be 4K console, Project Scorpio, a bunch of cool stuff on, you know, some amazing exclusives they have, like uh, like Motorsport 7 hmm. and Gears of War and maybe a new Halo. They're just going to be biting their nails until 2 p.m. on Sunday. <laughs> When's the Microsoft going to start? I, at this point, Microsoft, you, you've kind of dropped the ball a lot. So I, I don't, I don't know what to expect from them. Um, like they had, uh, they had the Fable that got canceled. They had um, whether or not you think that's a good game. It, it's still an exclusive that got dropped. Uh, Scalebound got dropped. Honestly, I, I'm not expecting a lot from from Microsoft this year, other than them trying to keep up with Sony. It reminds me of a cricket trying to keep up with a cheetah. Yeah, the uh, the Bethesda Bethesda, the Bethesda one, seven at... p.m. Pacific mm-hmm. time, Sunday, June eleventh. Okay, so this is this we are is stoked the big one. for this. We are. There is two new IPs that we expect to see, and we expect a new app game. So we're expecting. A surprise release for the fall. We're expecting updates to a couple of their uh, existing stuff. So we got Fallout Shelter. We got the uh, the Scrolls uh, app game coming out soon. So or or mini game. I don't know. I don't know exactly what you want to call it or classify it as. But we've got tons of this stuff coming from Bethesda. Really excited for this one. Hoping that they smash us through the park. So as far as like Fallout 4 itself goes. We're going to see a VR treatment for the game, possibly a 4K resolution jump for the game. I wouldn't hold my breath on that because they are they they just recently dropped a you know an HD texture package and it was kind of like meh. And it was really big and it really didn't do very much to the game. But it's good to note that the game Fallout 4 is designed in a way that they can increase the overall graphics of the entire game by adding a simple patch right? Um, with a massive download for like 4K or 8K. So we're not expecting anything new for Fallout 4 itself. There's nothing new going to come out down the line as far as like story or content wise. And as far as a the, the, the talk about the multiplayer, uh, I definitely think we're going to see that in a new... We're going to see that in one of the new IPs or possibly Fallout 5 down the road. They're going to do it right and they're going to smash it out of the park. So that's their goal at, at any rate. So we won't well, see and it. So it makes sense that they would they would put that in a new, in something new as opposed to trying to retrofit in, uh, an already released game. On Monday, June 12th, we've got Ubisoft at 1 p.m. Pacific time and we've got Sony at 6 o'clock Pacific time. So for Sony... I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, We've got, of course, Kojima. And Kojima might be dropping a new trailer on that day on showcasing that new project, Death Stranding, that he's working on. And I hope that we see something really cool. Maybe some gameplay would be nice. Because we've been been speculating on that for a very long time. Uh, But the other amazing news at the Sony one is definitely going to be Last of Us 2. Definitely going to get an update on that. Uh, Days Gone, going to get a huge update on that. God of War, probably going to get a big update on that. And of course, Detroit Become Human, probably going to have a massive thing on that. So really looking forward to this. Um, So if you're not familiar, Detroit Become Human is a collection of stories of robots and AIs who are slowly becoming sentient and it's their kind of like their their tale of their story and um you know kind of going from there Hmm. i don't expect any surprises from sony i do expect uh maybe some stuff with their their 
VR and PS4 stuff. It's too early for us to see a massive, like, super awesome exclusive VR title that is going to sell out like hotcakes. Like, VR is still kind of a kind of a gimmicky thing, and it's nothing that somebody would have sank, like, $200 million into developing a game for. It's still in the early days of its existence. Uh, we get some really cool titles, for sure, absolutely, 100%, um, but nothing that's, like, super groundbreaking as far as a massive announcement on a new, you know, like, The Last of Us, you know, what that did to the industry, what Fallout 4 did to the industry, what, you know, Skyrim did. We're not going to get any of those massive, huge updates on anything VR-related, even though I think uh, Sony's probably in the best position for that right now at the moment, but hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Okay, now... <sighs> we should probably talk about Ubisoft. Uh, Ubisoft. Uh, so, Ubisoft... Exists. They are definitely a game company that exists. And they will be at E3. And they will be at E3. And, um, they've had some pretty rough blunders recently, to put it mildly. <laughs> um, their movies have kind of... movie didn't go off too well. Um for the Assassin's Creed. Um, we haven't seen a new Assassin's Creed, so we'll probably get some news on that. The division, probably not going to get anything big. Um, I'm, I've been pretty, to be, to be honest, I've been pretty disappointed with Ubisoft for, for a long time now. Um, I think that they've really kind of dropped the ball in a lot of places and I hope that they do better. I, I really do. And I hope that they have something cool. But right now, literally nothing is on my... Things like Halo and Assassin's Creed, they're kind of like... It's kind of given that you're going to be getting, you know, a new one of these and a new one of these and a new one of these. I, I, I don't think they have anything new. I don't think they have anything new. I think what they have is Assassin's Creed and Far Cry. Uh, the new Far Cry does look good. I will give them credit for this. I will give them credit for how the new Far Cry looks. I'll give them credit for the atmosphere and the kind of this cre creepy story that they're pushing. The trailer came out, looks really solid, looks really good. Um, but after having played The Division, after having dealt with the atrocities in the last couple of Assassin's Creed games as far as technical issues and and especially Unity, um, I'm not. I'm not going to be pre-ordering any of their stuff, and I'm and I'm probably not even gonna. I'm probably not gonna play it in the first week or two because, honestly, it's really hard to trust them after all this stuff that they've dropped. So I don't want to get too negative on it. So <laughs> after that, you don't want to get too negative on it. Well, I think that ship has sailed. Yeah, yeah. So the only thing from Ubisoft that I am really interested in seeing, and the only thing that I am definitely pre-ordering, and it's because. Um, most people <laughs> that are involved in the project haven't been involved in other projects at Ubisoft for too long. Like, just, just saying, is the South Park game. Um, no, we're not going to rehash jokes on that title again. But yeah, looking forward to that one. So that's that's a, that's good, right? Ubisoft is doing so, something, so right? There is, so there is, a, there is a bright spot on the horizon. Yeah, there's a bright spot. Let's talk about Nintendo. So uh, that's uh, June, June 13th, uh, 9, 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, is the Nintendo Spotlight. So kind of closing the show, uh, we are expecting to see uh, this game that's coming out. I don't know if you've played this game or heard about this game. I am so stoked for this game. I don't know if you've heard it. Uh, it's called uh, it's called Kingdom Hearts. Kingdom what now? Yeah, Kingdom Hearts. So it's, it's crazy. It's so cool. Um, it reminds me of a game that I played like 15 years ago by pretty much the same name. And then we in 2004 we got Chain of Memories, and in 2005 we got you know Kingdom Hearts 2. And then you know I would I, I thought to myself, yeah, it would kind of really suck if the game never went anywhere for 10 years. <laughs> that would really really suck, and that would be really horrible, especially if they promised you know the game coming out multiple times over that 10 year period, but kept on delaying it for like you know two to three years at a time. That would really suck. Hmm. I'm not bitter about this at all. <laughs> Clearly, you're using your not bitter voice. Yeah, my 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 not bitter voice. My God. Okay. Anyways, now let's do the breakdown for expected games. Assassin's Creed. Obviously, we just talked about that one. Um, we're also expecting uh, some news on Crackdown Three. 
Looking forward to that. Looking forward to Crash Bandicoot. Love that one. Cyberpunk 2077. I'm re I'm crossing my fingers. I'm praying that we get uh, a release, you know, of next year and some really cool, like, you know, trailers and stuff. But that's that's not that's not going to come. And and we we talked about this in a previous podcast. The reason why it's not going to come is because they've rebooted the tech behind the game almost completely. And they did that at the beginning of this year, and maybe or maybe a little last year. So I'm sure there's a lot of like non-game engine content that's been worked on. But considering that they've probably changed engines from what we're hearing, uh, I don't expect to see that game for another two to three years. So other than that, we've got um, Dark Siders three. Looking forward to that. Uh, Days Gone going to be huge. Detroit going to be huge. Um, as much as people are hoping to get an Elder Scrolls 6 announcement, not going to happen. Um, not going to happen. Sorry, guys. It's not on the table for this year, and I'm pretty positive about that. We might get a tech pitch where they, where they talk about the technology, how they're improving it, and they give, you know, the kind of like behind the scenes tour of, you know, a couple of cubicles at, at, uh, at their office and talk about like, Hey, oh yeah, you know, this is what we're working on. Maybe like a handful of screenshots or, or some basic stuff, but just to show that, you know, they're working on it, but it's not coming out this year, guys, not going to happen. Sorry. It's, it's been addressed a few times. So other than that, we got Gears of War 5, we got Halo 6, possibles on those ones, pre or pretty likely, as I should say, Kingdom Hearts, pretty likely, hopefully, Capcom versus Marvel, or as some people like to say, Marvel versus Capcom, <laughs> Infinite. <laughs> That's suspected to, we're, we're going to get some news on that one. I'm going I'm I'm to love that one. We're going to get... Um, Metro 2035, Middle Earth, Shadow of War, probably. We're probably going to get some info on Red Dead Redemption 2. We're probably, possibly going to get some info on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. There's a ton of smaller titles, and there's some really good stuff. Gravity Rush, stuff like that. Small games that I'm really looking forward to. I would kill to hear something about Perea Chronicles, but that's not going to happen. Um, but what is going to happen and what we might get a big scoop on in, at some point during the weekend is State of Decay 2. This I have a little bit of inside information on. So State of Decay 2 was basically the first game that they kind of started working on when Undead Labs started the whole State of Decay. It's, it was a pretty small studio when they started up and what they did was they did a smaller, more easier to make version, which became State of Decay 1. And that game did very, very well. And so now they've been working on State of Decay 2, which is much more of a first person uh, game. And it's very, uh, it's very friend based. So you're going to be playing it with friends. Um, it really, I think, kind of takes the place of Left 4 Dead. Honestly, you're going to play it with a team of like four players and you're going to try and survive a trip from one side of this map to another side of the map between like stories and uh, and um, interaction points. From some of the trailer footage that we've seen, you've got kind of like a, a you know, a daisy kind of feel to it, like run out, scavenge for supplies, you know, get them together, to, you know, make a camp, defend your camp. But the other thing that it really focuses on is driving, which is really cool because you're going to be driving long, long, long distances in these cars. So your car is kind of like your base and you're going to have uh, some pretty, possibly some pretty interesting character or survivor profiles to pick from. So, you know, each of your, each of the survivors are going to have like things that they excel at or things that they're kind of, you know, bad at. I play a... A, a zombie board game, and I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. But I play it with my uh, my family every every couple of months, and it's very much kind of like what this game is kind of reaching for, and that's good because it's a very fun game. It's very fun to you know you split up or you stay in like teams of two, and you go in, you try and get you know your supplies, and then you accidentally you stumble across a huge horde of zombies and you're like, got to strategize on the fly and you got to like, you know, meet up together, 
work things out. And it's really awesome. I'm really looking forward to this title. They have been really active with their community. They were really active with where they were kind of going and what they kind of wanted to do. And they really did rely on the on their community members and the forums to kind of help you know formulate their game. And they did a really good job with State of Decay 1. So I expect that State of Decay 2 will definitely blow it out of the water. Hmm. Oh, that sounds really good. We're definitely looking forward to E3, and we're going to do as much coverage as we can, give our reactions to things as they're happening. Definitely like and sub to the Triple S League YouTube channel to catch all of that. You know, Also look for that uh, reaction to the, the ending of Prey that I'm going to be putting up within the next few days here. Oh, by the way, uh, check out in the, in the description below, you'll find a link to uh, a music video that we collaborated on with a musician called Eternal Prophecy. He did an amazing very epic cover of uh, the the uh, Dragonborn comes song from uh, Skyrim, and we provided in-game visuals for a music video for that project. So it was a lot of fun to work on. Very exciting, uh, very exciting project. So definitely check that out. The link will be in the description down below. Thanks so much for listening. On behalf of Subsidian, my name is Ashen Entity. We will talk to you next week. Thanks for listening to Augmented Reality, presented by the Triple S League. If you appreciate this weekly content, please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Patrons get exclusive access to podcast outtake videos, downloadable music, an RSS feed of our podcast, and more. See patreon.com slash the triple S league for details. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.